table. And we're going to talk about some big, big issues. Um, we're going to get briefed on exactly what some of those things are. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for taking that step. Uh, I want to thank uh, Kaufman and Kellen for, for helping to uh, agree to this. 7-Eleven is here. Uh, the whole idea is to have uh, an important conversation about what makes the place significant. What's, what's culturally significant about places like Walt's House? And we know we have other issues like this throughout the city. So this, I think, is going to be very groundbreaking for all of us. It's important for, for us as the city council to see this kind of uh, collaboration, this kind of con uh, conversation. And so we hope to, to uh, work together collaboratively, positively, towards uh, some great ideas. With that, I'm going to welcome Shannon Miller of OHP. To, to help brief us and, and walk us through what some of the issues are and get us up to date on what we're here doing here tonight. Shannon Miller. Thanks so much. Um, so again, we're not in any sort of, it, it's, the ball is really in the applicant's court in terms of timing. There's not an application before the city at the moment. And so we don't, we don't know necessarily when that, that next step will occur, but whenever it does, it'll then be scheduled for the HDRC. Um, there is a, a, a kind of a FAQ, frequently asked question sheet that um, is on the front table if anyone didn't pick, pick it up, but it has some of this basic information that we thought some of you might be asking, and so be sure to grab that if you have questions. And, um, and then also, uh, Claudia Guerra and, and Kathy Rodriguez are here in the back, also from OHP. And um, they'll be floating around a lot, as, as will I, if you have any questions related to the process or design review or anything like that while we're going through um, the evening. So with that, I'll turn it over sure. to Tim. Yes, please. I, I'll spin you around a little bit and uh, talk to you from here. So a, a lot of what Shannon mentioned was, was strictly the, uh, the start and the finish and the end product of, uh, of this discussion regarding this property. And really, and what we were suggesting is that it needs to be part of the community. It needs to reference some of the stuff that happened on the site. Um, it should not be ignoring that the malt house was here. It should be celebrating that this was the site of the malt house. So one of the things that we required, there are two historic signs on the property. One's a little bit larger, one's a little smaller. Um, we asked that they incorporate one of the signs into their plans, they agreed to that. They also agreed to donate the other sign to uh, an organization on the west side that would be willing to take care of it. So they were willing to do that. We started looking at the architecture the, of the existing malt house, the scale of it, the size of it, how it's oriented to the street, and see if any of those things could be mimicked. Um, and then the last point that we kind of talked about was again this community gathering space. And so we asked them to try to create community gathering space on the site, an outdoor place, a covered place that you couldn't necessarily pull a car up into, but that might be a gathering place, a picnic table, something like that. We're dealing with um trying to find possibilities in public projects that not only sometimes uh, look towards revitalization and trying to find something new and a way of expressing ourselves as a community and where we're going, but also quite a bit in terms of the notion of place keeping, the idea of trying to preserve the integrity or the authenticity of what um, we all remember or that has been inherited through the work of generations that have come before. Um, I'm fortunate to be a third generation San Antonian, so I've got lots of photographs of what San Antonio looked like and lots to kind of uh, it help me become passionate about the projects that we're doing as a city today. Um, and I also get the chance to work with a lot of artists and uh, public art isn't simply about artists, though. With every project that, that happens in the public realm is involving property owners, it's involving professionals and consultants and thinkers about finding a solution. And in this kind of a project, which is not 
um, one of a kind. There's many projects in many areas of the city that are facing situations of this type. Um, it's important to remember that the, 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 the benefit we have uh, when faced with the situation is, is kind of reaching into our creative best, our, our ability to work with situations and find beauty and find um, the, something that we can do that is um, the best of available options sometimes and because, because nothing can ever necessarily stay the same forever. Um, the other thing to remember is the talents that we have as a community. Um, we have talented, you know, we have the, the talents that go into projects of this kind, to, but also amazing fabricators, artists, and, and it's kind of a situation where whatever we can think uh, has, the, has the possibility to actually come to life when, when we're working through a public art process. Uh, we've, we literally find a lot of people that years ago would say, not in my backyard, not, you know, they were resistant to, to that type of, of, um, of, of investment, cultural investment. But we're in a different city today, and I think that there's a lot that could be accomplished. I think part of the, this conversation is about um, looking for the, the nexus between the community and also um, development, which is happening at, at an ever-increasing pace. But it also brings back opportunity to communities and jobs, and it brings back um, you know, some prosperity as well. So I think that the, the, what's on the table today with artists and community members and architects is to um, look deeply at what could be done. And, and when it comes to public art, every surface Every vantage point sometimes opens up a, a new opportunity, and uh, many of the times those can be at a very high caliber that can draw attention not only locally but nationally. And then on the other side of things, a very simple appointment project can do something that recalls uh, the past, like like in a deep and, and very touching manner. And so the. the the murals that capture images of those that have gone before are what we do to kind of keep them with us today and honor them. Right, but just to make sure that everyone understands, um, this property is currently zoned in such a way that allows for the 7-Eleven to operate as is. So no rezoning is required. It is a use allowed by right. So um, the conversation tonight is really not intended to be about use. Um, because that is already determined by the underlying zoning as, a, as, as is dictated by the, the city council. Um, this is really about design and that is, that is what is in, under the purview of the HDRC and that is what we're here to discuss is what is the appropriate design for um, whatever is to be constructed on the site. And we, we really do not have the ability to, contact, to comment on use because that is, that is already determined by the underlying zoning. I guess one key point, and it kind of came up at the end, but that preserving or uh, retaining a social gathering space there on the site is much more important than uh, maybe retaining uh, the architectural components of the malt house. Uh, so the malt house is a very important place in the community for gathering and for uh, people to meet with one another or just hang out, and uh, retaining those elements on site is very important. Uh, the Malt House was seen as a sort of community geographic landmark, so in speaking, uh, the Malt House was a point of reference in the West Side community. Um, the need to create a democratic space that welcomes the full spectrum of the West Side community. Uh, I think one of the wonderful points about the Malt House was its price point allowed for anyone to enjoy it, uh, and while 7-Eleven has its own uh, price points. Uh, still creating a space where everyone in the community feels welcome to be there and uh, making it convenient not just for those accessing the site via their vehicle but also for those accessing it through the bus and uh, on foot. Alright, so my name is Isabel Garcia. Um, I'm the hell we're supposed to share this plan. Any idea? Um, any piece of paper? Describe it. So what we did was um, we went with what they're proposing pretty much. Uh, because in terms of what Colton was just saying, 
Uh, it's not so much um, trying to preserve an actual building as it might be trying to preserve um, a memory. So what we did was we looked at taking the building as they propose it and sliding it just a few feet, as many feet as they can. They said there's a little bit of room, yeah, to the north. Um, to allow for there to be more room along the, the Buena Vista side up to the corner uh, where it hits the front of the so that we could put in um, a covered or canopy kind of patio area that then allows the neighborhood to come in and start to take ownership of that space. Um, it would be partial, well, it would be covered pretty much from um, where the parking on the interior of the site is to 7-Eleven, pretty much to the corner, and it might wrap the corner and have some kind of relationship to the roof of the, uh, the proposed bus stop as well. Uh, this way then there becomes a kind of transitional space between 7-Eleven and the street allowing for people, whether they're pedestrians or just neighbors coming over, to actually occupy that space. It was also suggested that maybe on the interior of the building they provide a um, function that harkens back to the malt house from the standpoint of gathering, and that would be to um, have three tables there where you can sit with your cup of coffee or with a sandwich you buy or whatever it might be to uh, kind of generate that idea of people staying there, not just kind of buy your thing and leave, but actually uh, spending some time there and hanging out. Uh, because social spaces on the outside are great unless you kind of, but only as an idea, unless there's something to have you actually linger. So this would be uh, doing that. Um, to promote that idea and then uh, on the north side where there is parking we were also looking at maybe providing a canopy over those parking spaces to again kind of make a gesture back to um, what the old malt house was in terms of when you would pull up in your car and park under that canopy and um, you know they would come and serve you. I don't think 7-Eleven is going to do that but <laughs> you never know. Anybody have anything else? Oh, maybe oh. referencing the, uh, the poles, the temple type. The structure for the, uh, the canopy for the pumps to maybe be a little bit more playful, kind of referencing back to that kind of architecture uh, of that area that was like that, for that time. I guess our priority was to kind of look at all the different uh, aspects of the mall house and how they related to Know, the, the residents at that time, and you know, I have vivid memories in the 80s only. That's what, that's what I remember. But uh, I do remember it was a it was a place to go, um, and I think memories is probably what stands out in our mind as being a priority was the the neighborhood uh, and the fact that you know not only the, the entire neighborhood around the mall house came to visit. Uh, this restaurant, but from all over San Antonio. So it was, to us, an icon. And so uh, looking at the comments uh, that the uh, HDRC gave, plus all the input that we had, uh, we've come up with our own solution as to how we can incorporate everything that we heard. Uh, but the biggest thing is just the memories um, felt that uh, this was sort of similar to the pig pig stand, uh, although very different in many ways, but there were similarities. Uh, we think that uh, the malt house should be respected. Uh, I think the fact that so many people are, have fond memories of mm -hmm. this uh, location, I think that needs to be implemented into the plan. Uh, being realistic, uh, the first thing we asked was, where are the guest decks going to be? Every next to the neighborhood or what? And also, where the tank is going to come through? I mean, and the only way it could be done is to the building. So some of that location part has to be addressed, and everyone should be aware of it. Uh, so the coming in of the tanker trucks, uh, they're also using one lane of uh, customers. Uh, so we looked at the entryway, the exits, uh, safety, public safety. So that was the first thing, and then from there we went all crazy and uh, started doing stuff to the building putting them all outside here and there and everywhere. Uh, but top priority is uh, safety in the community. 
how we're going to get these tankers in and out. And also, we're now having people from the SAM, the SAM shelter reaching our area. So it's only fair for the 7-Eleven people to be aware that they do need to have um, a way of seeing all parts of their facility, outside, inside, everywhere. Uh, and we do put tables, because at first, that was the first instance, you don't know, put tables, but then are you going to attract an element that most, most of us are probably used to by now, but an element others are not used to. So that will affect their business also. So we just try to be open and honest, and things that they need to look at. Uh, it's historic to all families. So that's where we came, so they came up with a new design, not a new design, but a new location, like you said. And just be aware of that. So we don't have any surprises later that, hey, why did they move it? Why did they take this? Thank you. Uh, the first um, element of the site was uh, the food of the malt house. Um, and we thought of a couple of different ways to incorporate the food or the memories of the food. Um, one being to use recipes from the old malt house. And specifically, we focused on onion rings. <laughs> um, that could be sold. Um, we also were trying to address some of the concerns of turning the um, 7-Eleven into a restaurant, which might not be ideal for 7-Eleven, and so we thought maybe putting a food truck on the site would be good, specifically the malt house food truck, and maybe incorporating the signage onto the top of the food truck in some way would be exciting. Um, and that feeds right into the second um, element that we thought was most important, which was a community gathering space, which obviously would be um, just work hand in hand with that food truck, and we tried to address some of the concerns other groups have brought up about um, potential vagrancy issues, so we're going to let public talk a little bit more about that in the design. Um, the third element was a reflection of the history of, um, of the site, so that would um, could, could encompass things like um, photography, um, murals, a time capsule, or other creative storytelling methods of um, incorporating quotes or stories um, into physical structures on the site, like sidewalks. Um, or, or other physical um, monuments to those stories. Um, and then last but certainly not least, the structural features of the current, um, the current structure, uh, like the canopies and the signage we felt were um, pretty significant and should be incorporated in some way um, into the future plans. And so all of those are reflected in our, um, in our sketches.